All right, today we're going to talk about adjusting objects in Adobe Illustrator. One of the things that we see a lot of students do is rather than adjust something, they will simply delete it and redo it. Or they take the long way to adjust something or draw something that could be easily modified, like our number one, our teardrop. Today we're going to be focusing on a several tools. We're going to be focusing on the add anchor point, the delete anchor point tool, the anchor point tool itself, direct select, and a little pen tool. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what we're doing, but if you want to follow along, that would be great. For the first one, our goal is to take this circle and adjust it to be a teardrop. When we click on any type of object, we can see that it's made up of anchor points. These anchor points have these handles which dictate that it has a curve. I want to make sure that this anchor point lines up here rather than where it currently is. By using the direct select, I can double click on one anchor point and simply drag it up to adjust it. However, we can easily see that this doesn't line up with what I've asked for. So we need to get rid of the curve. And the best tool to get rid of curves, to add curves and delete curves, is the anchor point tool. This is also a pin tool behavior that you should have already seen once before. Keyboard shortcut for this is Shift C. It's a good one to have in your arsenal. All we're going to do is simply click one time on the anchor point that has a handle and it will remove them. You also can do the opposite where you can click and drag out handles where one so there was not handles. Very simple, very easy way to draw a teardrop rather than drawing this manually with the pen tool. Number two is the wave activity. We're going to use this same tool so I don't even need to change because I need a curve right here and right now I don't have that. So instead of removing a curve, we're going to click and add a curve and I'm going to pull a handle until my line here lines up correctly on the left hand side. However, this does not line up. So rather than deleting it, I am simply going to adjust it. I'm going to then take my anchor point tool and holding down my option key, which we practiced when we did the pen tool exercise, is I'm just going to adjust the direction and the depth of my handle until my wave lines up appropriately. Our next exercise is the pocket. Right now we have a six-sided polygon, which we learned how to draw in basic shapes, but we only need something that has five sides. Drawing a pocket could be easily done with the pen tool, but this is a much faster way to do it. I have six anchor points. Rather than having six, I need five. So I'm gonna use the delete anchor point. Pick any which one you'd like, and you're just gonna click. And you'll see that there is a behavior with the negative next to your pen tool. And I'm just gonna click one time to remove that first point. If I go back to my selection tool, which is again, V on my keyboard, I can now get outside of my shape, my object here, and rotate it and then move it up to line it up. Fast way to make a pocket. Number four, we need to take this rectangle and round out our rectangle. And I'm going to show you some neat ways to do this. You're going to click on it with your selection tool and you'll see that I've got these circles that now appear in the middle corners of my rectangle. If I hover over them, my mouse has now a curve showing me that if I click and drag, which I'm going to do, it's going to pull curves. What it's really doing is adding in, instead of having one anchor point, I now have two anchor points that if I manipulate those individually, you'll see that they have handles. What's really neat about this is if you use the direct select and select just one curve, you can just pull a curve on one corner rather than having them on all the corners. Very easy to manipulate and create rounded rectangles without having to round every corner. Number five is our donut. We need to take this round shape and create a square center. We're going to once again go back to our anchor point tool because this has a curve on it and I see that because I know it has handles by using the direct select. Instead, I'm just gonna click and remove the handles so that I get straight lines on the inside. Our last one on page one is the hill. 
This one, we are going to go back to our pen tool that we haven't used yet in this exercise. P for pen tool. And I need to add an anchor point because I need there to be a curve at the top. I'm going to follow the line on the path. And I want to make sure that I see that word intersect. Intersect tells me that I'm on the original path and I'm not outside of the path. The other thing I'm using is the pink smart guidelines is going to tell me that I am lined up with the center point of my square. And I'm going to click one time. I'm going to go back to my drag select. I'm going to double click on that new anchor point I added and pull up so that it lines up here. And again, we've used it a bunch, but we're going to go back to that anchor point and we're going to pull out a curve. If you hold down the shift key while you pull out a curve, you can ensure that your handles are going to come out straight or at a 45 degree angle only, ensuring that you get the right dimensions on your curves. And that is page one. Moving on to page two. Our goal is to take my image to make your image match. So you'll see we're missing some stuff on your image. We're missing the second hole for our donut to fall into. And our vehicle here should look like a truck and not a sedan. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to adjust this item so that it starts to match. First thing I know is I can use my direct select and double click on those anchor points to extend this out. If I hold down shift, it's going to make sure that I extend it out straight and I don't have to worry about getting off at a weird angle. And I'm going to do that for both points. I'm also, again, using those pink smart guides to ensure that I'm keeping everything lined up so nothing gets out of order. You look at your original source, there's a divot. And if I kind of count here, I can add, I can note that I need to add four additional anchor points. I'm going to go back to my add anchor points and I'm just going to click intersecting with my path to add those points. I'm going to use my direct select to adjust these down. With this activity, we're not looking for perfection. We're just looking that you can manipulate the shape to get something that looks pretty close to my example. If yours is a little off, no big deal. Also need to move our wheel and increase our shadow. So I'm just going to grab my wheel again. I'm going to hold down the shift key as I move my wheel to ensure that I'm keeping it straight and I'm lining it up with my original wheel over here. To increase the length of my shadow, I'm on my selection tool. I do have to zoom in a little because it's a little narrow and I couldn't grab exactly where I needed to. And I'm just going to extend that out so it intersects with the base of the back of my trolley so that it all looks very similar to what I have up here. Last but not least, we're going to adjust our car. Our car should look like a pickup truck. And right now it's too round. And our truck in our my image is much sharper. It also has two windows, and I only need one window. So I'm going to get rid of this first window, because this second window is closer to the shape that I need. And I'm just going to move that forward. These are all very curved, and I need something that looks a lot more angular. So I'm going to go back to that anchor point tool and start removing some of these curves. I like to remove them all and then go back and add back curves that I need. If you look at your original image again up here, you'll see that we also need to make some adjustments. And I need to add a couple of anchor points. So first, I'm going to start moving my points by using my direct select. This point I know needs to go up. And this point needs to go up. And I'm just going to slowly adjust until I start to get something like I need. I also need my truck bed. So I'm going to move this point and I'm going to pull this point down. You can see I need to add a curve here. So I'm simply going to add an anchor point. Use my anchor point tool, which again is shift C. And I'm going to pull a curve and then pull it up. Once you have that curve, you can start manipulating and start moving things around until it starts to look like you would want it to look. And we're also going to change our window so that it looks more like our source image. Again, we're not looking for perfection, but we're just looking to see, can you manipulate and create something that looks closer to the source image? Once you're done, you're going to save this and turn it into the Google Classroom. Hopefully that wasn't too bad, and you will start to see how you can adjust objects rather than starting over.